Good morning and welcome to Clayland Baptist Church. How's everybody doing this morning? It is good to see you in the house of the Lord. If you would, let's stand as we uh, go to the Lord in prayer. And I would ask that if you would to remain standing as we pledge our flags to the front. Let's pray. (coughs) Father, we do thank you for the day that you've given to us. Lord, for this hour to come into your house and to worship. Father, to lift up our voices in prayer, in song, in word. God, we ask that everything that is said and done will bring glory and honor to your name. Lord, as we, uh, as we have this special worship, looking back to the cross, remembering what it is that you did for us there. Father, we ask that our realization of our salvation become even more precious. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Brother Lord. Good morning. morning. Let us recognize our flags to the front. First to the American flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now to the Christian flag. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands. One brotherhood, uniting all Christians in service and in love. And you may be seated. Again, good morning. Our call to worship hymn this morning is found on page 215, if you're following along in the hymnal, or on the screen here, Majesty. If you have your bulletin, just a few announcements I'd like to share with you. <clears throat> First of all, I would like to say uh, uh, you see the announcement about the total donations for the Lighting Moon Christmas offering. Uh, $500 was given, so that's pretty good. Thank you for that. And I also ask that if you have not yet uh, done so, there's still quite a few uh, Christmas cards that are out on the table uh, in the hallway. If you would, please check. Uh, that table before you leave today and make sure that uh, you pick up any cards that may have your name or your family's name on there. Also, uh, we're continuing to collect uh, non-perishables for those that are in need, 
and uh, there are a, a couple of donation boxes that are around. One of them is out here in the foyer, just as you're coming into the church. Also uh, mentioned that uh, students will be meeting in the rec center at 630 uh, this coming Wednesday night. Also adults will be meeting in the overflow edition also at 630. And uh, we will continue our study in the book of Second Peter. And um, I think we're getting close to starting chapter 3. So uh, that is the last chapter of the book. And uh, we'll be going into another study after that. But anyway, we're going to finish uh, Second Peter chapter 3 uh, coming up this Wednesday. Also, if you would notice on the back of the bulletin where our prayer list is, it is quite lengthy. And a lot of needs have changed uh, since the last time that that prayer list was updated. So I guess, uh, or I, I'm asking that if you would, to uh, take a look at that uh, prayer list and uh, make any changes on the uh, tear out that is in the bulletin on that insert. And if you would, to drop that in the offering plate a little bit later on in our service. I think that's all the announcements that I have other than uh, uh, Monday night. Monday night, uh, ladies' Bible study starting at 5:30. Starting at 5:30 to 7, and uh, that is the life of Messiah Christ. And uh, ladies, you want to be uh, aware of that class. All right. Any other announcements that we need to make today? That will be every Monday. And that will be the life of Messiah class is every Monday, uh, starting at 5:30. 30. 10. Sunday school report. Sure. Uh, <laughs> Last week, uh, we broke the 50 mark, Amen. and I was uh, wondering if we were going to break the 50 mark this morning. Well, we did. We had 52. Yeah, we had 52 this morning. <laughs> had seven visitors, and better class goes to Javon, uh, Javon and also Sandy. All so right. Good job. Good job. Uh, yeah. Men's state dinner being changed. Go ahead. <laughs> Got several announcements. Um, uh, naturally, the uh, Baptist people of Clayland like to meet and greet and eat. So, Amen. Uh, uh, first off, February the 27th, or excuse me, January the 27th, we're going to meet here at the church at 3 o'clock. We're going to have an orchestra outing. We're going to have them either raw or steamed. We'll provide the crackers and the drink. You bring your hot sauce. So whatever you like to eat on hot on oysters, bring it, bring it then. Now the steak supper, ladies night steak supper, was scheduled for the 15th. It's gonna be changed to the 16th. Friday night. Friday night, in lieu of the outing at Diamond, Diamond Park. Park. Yeah. On the 14th. <laughs> yeah, Williamson. 15th. 15th, 15th. <laughs> Williamson Branch has a program on the 15th. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> on both of these outings, we'd like to have a head count to know how many we can prepare for either tell me or Gene on the oysters, but then on the steak supper night, the ladies night steak supper, please confirm it with me where I can turn in an accurate number for them. Okay. All right. All right. There you go. Um, I, it's, been a, it's been a little while since we've had oysters here at the church. Use, we have done it, or, or typically we do it at the fall festival, but uh, we haven't done it in the last couple of years. So uh, kind of look forward to that. Again, January the what? 27th? 27. 27th. Oysters. Fall. Three o'clock here at the church, so I uh, look forward to that. How many of y'all like oysters? Here we go. All right. Yeah, y'all let uh, either Tim or uh, Brother Gene know that you'll be here for that. All right. Anything else? Brother Lauren. Our next hymn this morning is on page 238. Breathe on me. <laughs> Oh, 
Amen. It uh, got just a little bit of feedback, Bobby. Um, it is good to be here this morning. Um, if you will notice, um, as the table is set up, that we will be having the Lord's Supper this morning. And before we get to that, um, I want to say that, as uh, most of you are aware, uh, the Lord has certainly been doing some things in Clayland over the past few months. Amen? Amen. Uh, over the past several weeks, uh, we have had several youth and uh, we've had some adults to come forward. Now, I will say that uh, several of those youth have come forward to receive Christ as their Savior and be baptized members of Clayland Baptist Church. Amen? Amen. Uh, we've had others that have come forward to join our fellowship, to be members of Clayland, and uh, at the same time, they wanted to be rebaptized. So, Looking forward to that. We've had others come forward that just said, Hey, we see what the Lord is doing around here. We enjoy the people at this church, and we want to be part of it. And they have come forward and uh, have joined our church as well. So with all of these things that are going, and without a doubt, it is exciting to see what God is doing. Amen? Amen. I also want you to understand that all of this is the result of, of a lot of hard work and dedication, um, especially those that are involved in our, our youth and our, our children's ministries, without a doubt. And, and I'm not even going to begin to name names because I'm going to leave somebody out, and I don't want to make anybody mad. Uh, so, um, but I will say that those that, that have dedicated their lives to, to the spiritual growth and development of these children, and these youth, I can't say thank you enough. This, this is part of the results that we see in from this. And, and it's not just with the children's ministry. It's Like I said, we've had adults come forward for, for the same reasons. And, and for our adult ministries that are going on, it's not just the preaching and teaching that comes from the pulpit, but, but also uh, through the Sunday school hour. And I would say, and y'all know how I feel about the Sunday school hour, I would say that, that what happens in Sunday school is just as important, if not more so, than what happens in the worship hour. So we see, so we see the results of this, and, and, uh, and, and we see the results of, of all of those who, who come to and attend the, uh, the fellowships that we have and the ladies' Bible study groups that we have, the, the lunch outings that we have. The, the socials that we have here at the church, the, the birthdays, so all of these things, all of these things are working together to grow this worship, to grow this family, not just in the kingdom of heaven, but, but growing closer to God and, and closer to each other. It is a blessing to see what is going on to see what God is doing here at this church. Now, as it has been announced, um, we will be doing the, the Lord's Supper this Sunday. And then um, and the next Sunday, it, it might take a little while. Uh, next Sunday, we're going to have baptism. And... Uh, I know that there's, there's some that, that we're not going to baptize until, until March, but uh, there's going to be quite a few that we're going to be baptizing next Sunday. If, I, if my math is right, there's going to be about six or seven that we will baptize next Sunday. And then uh, in March, there, there will be uh, three more that I know of already. And um, I'll, I'll just go ahead and be honest with you. I'm hoping between now and March, there's more that we can add to that amen so i uh, look forward to that so that's what that's what's coming up this sunday and next sunday and i also <coughs> i also have to say that 
the how good it is for our church to be celebrating these two ordinances at the or, or commands that the Lord has given us um, at the beginning of the year. And as we think about baptism and, and what it is, and we think about the Lord's Supper and, uh, and what it is, we have to understand that both of these ordinances point back to the cross. And both of these things is what Jesus told us to do as Christians, as believers. I have to understand that when we accept the Lord Jesus Christ, as our Savior, we are to follow His example. And Jesus said, follow my example. He was baptized, and He says that we should be as well. And basically what baptism is doing is it is showing the world what has, uh, physically, what has happened to us spiritually. Because the Bible says that by being baptized, it is showing that we have died to our old self and that we have been raised a new creature, a creation or a new creature in Christ. And the act of baptism itself, it, it stands to show this. It, 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 it is saying that I am not ashamed, as Paul said in, uh, in Romans chapter 1. He said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. When we think about baptism and what it is, and we'll deal with this a little bit more next week, but I just kind of want to set the foundation not only for today, but for next week as well. Because as we think about baptism, as we think about the Lord's Supper, let me show you in Scripture what baptism is. In Romans, and this passage will be read next week as well, in Romans chapter 6 and verses 3 and 4 from the New Living Translation, it says, Or have you forgotten that when we were joined with Christ in baptism, that we were joined Him in His death, for we died and were buried with Christ by baptism, and just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives. When I read this passage of Scripture, I, I, we begin to understand exactly what baptism is and what it does for us. But I also have to say that, that uh, before that we can even be baptized, we have to be saved we have to accept the lord jesus christ as our savior and that is looking back to uh, uh the last supper as well both of these things point to the death burial and the resurrection of christ when we talk about baptism when we talk about the lord's supper we can go back and and uh, look at what jesus said in the great commission in matthew chapter 28 verse number 19 jesus gave us this command he said teach all nations and to baptize in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit Man, it's pointing back to the cross. When we think about these two ordinances, both of these ought to remind us of our own commitment and salvation. When we see a baptism take place, as I said earlier, it's a it's the outward sign, it's the outward showing of what has taken place spiritually. We have died to our old self, we were buried, we were raised a new creature. When we take part in the Lord's Supper, as we're going to see in just a little while, we are remembering that Christ died on the cross, He shed His blood, His body was broken for us, for, for our sins. Both of these. Should remind us of our commitment. And I got to say, as much as I'm looking forward to next week, I'm also excited to see these new members and new Christians take part in the Lord's Supper this week. Amen. They're taking part in this, some, some for the very first time, as new Christians, for the very first time. They're taking part in, in one of the commands of God to look back and to remember Him. For the very first time, they're taking part in this and understanding what it means, to understand what it's about, to understand why we do this, why we have this special service for this. And again, as we think about today, particularly the Lord's Supper within itself, we have to first understand why Jesus tells us to do this. 
And the truth is, <laughs> Jesus tells us to do this because sometimes we forget. Amen or oh me? Yeah. Um, I, I don't know about you, but uh, the older I get, the more forgetful I become. Anybody identify with that? No? Yes? No? Okay. <laughs> Hang in there. You will. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, let me give you this test. How many ever walked into a room and say, well, now what did I come in here for? And then you go back into the living room and sit down and go, oh, yeah. <laughs> we forget, don't we? And, and here's, here's one of the crazy things, and I, and I got to tell you this. I'm terrible with names. I, I can know somebody's name. I know it as good as my own, and sometimes I will see them, and it'll go right out the window, and I couldn't think of their name to save my life. Terrible with names. But I'm, trying, I'm working on it. I'm trying to get better at it. But we forget things. Uh, guys, let me ask you something real quick. <laughs> I just thought about this. I wanted to run this test. How many of you ever wound up in the doghouse before you got because you forgot an anniversary or a birthday? How many of you are willing to admit it? Okay. All right. Just checking. Just checking. Okay. Or got the date wrong. That one's even worse. <laughs> anyway. The truth is, is we struggle with forgetfulness. And um, I think one of, the, one of the places that this happens most often is that it happens in our Christian walk. As it, it's, it's many things as we forget in our day-to-day -day life, I think we forget even more often in our Christian walk. And um, I, think, I think we need these things to remind us. In fact, if you go back through the Old Testament, the theme that I find throughout the Old Testament is simply this. Remember. Remember. How many times as you survey the Old Testament does God tell the children of Israel to remember? And he gives them helpful things to remember throughout the years. Uh, the Last Supper, the Passover, which is what was taking place around this time. It was to help them remember what God had done for them and getting them out of Egypt. He set that up for them. How many of you like to look at rainbows? Every time that we see a rainbow, it should remind us, for us to remember that God once destroyed the, the earth by water. And he says, I'll never do that again. He, his judgment and wrath is coming, just not with water. So every time we see a rainbow, it should cause us to remember. Many of the other uh, uh, feasts and, and things that the, that the Israelites uh, uh, hold to even to today are there or put in place for them to remember. Over and over we find that, that the Lord is telling them to remember. He says, remember to keep my commandments. Remember to keep the Sabbath day holy. Remember to keep your worship day holy. Remember these things. Remember, remember, remember. In Numbers chapter 15, God gave them another uh, uh, memory aid tool. And, and this memory aid tool was to help the people, to help the Jews remember the commandment that God had given them. To remember that covenant that they had entered into God with. And on God's side of the covenant, it was that God was going to protect them. On their side of the covenant, he said, remember to keep the commandments. Remember to do what is right. Remember to, for us today, it would be the same as saying, remember to be a Christian. Amen. And sometimes we need that. Remember to be a Christian. So we go to Numbers chapter 15 and we look and we see what the memory tool was. In Numbers chapter 15 in verses 37 through 40, the Bible says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Give the following instructions to the people of Israel. Throughout the generations to come you must make tassels for the hems of your clothing and attach them with blue cord. And when you see the tassel, what does it say right there? Here's the key. You will remember to do what? Remember and obey all the commands of the Lord instead of following your own desires and defile yourselves 
as you are prone to do. Ouch. Amen. So the tassels will help you remember that you must obey all the commands and be holy to your God. How about that? That's pretty cool though, isn't it? And so and so we see the command that the Lord had given to Moses and 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 he passes this on and in the text it tells him to put these to put these tassels on the clothing and to have this blue cord wrapped around them in order to remember the covenant that they had entered in. See these tassels, you see the blue cord. Jog your memory. Remind you, hey, I'm a believer in the Old Testament. For us in the New Testament, it would be, hey, I'm a Christian. I belong to God. I'm supposed to act like a Christian. I'm supposed to be holy and honor our Lord. Remember, from the time the Lord gave the Israel the command in Numbers, to the time of Jesus' day, our ability to remember has not gotten any better. At the time of the cross, as that time was getting close, Jesus knew that the salvation hinged on a person's belief in what was about to happen there. Because of the death, burial, and resurrection, our faith is built on that foundation. Christian, do you understand how important it is for us to believe in that? As a matter of fact, our, our faith, it hinges on that. This morning as we go into this time of the Lord's Supper, just like the tassels on the clothing of the Hebrews, the bread and the cup, it serves as a reminder to us that our Lord and Savior died on the cross for your sins, for mine. Knowing that um, Jesus would soon be going to the cross, he wanted to celebrate this Passover with his disciples. When it was over, he took the bread, he took the cup, and he poured it, he served it to his disciples. This was actually one of the greatest expressions of faith. One of the greatest examples of devotion for them and for us today. Uh, Jesus had told his disciples of things that were soon going to be taking place. And this cup and this bread would stand as a reminder to all who were going to witness. It stands as a reminder for us today. And Jesus has given us the instruction and said, as long as or as often as you do this, you do this in remembrance of me. One of the main reasons, one of the main purposes for the suffering of Christ on the cross is for our salvation. It's the foundation of our faith. Without the cross, you cannot be saved. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. He was talking about the cross. So without the cross, you cannot be saved. Without the cross, we cannot have redemption of our sins. Without the cross, we cannot have fellowship with God our Father or Christ Jesus, His Son. Without the cross, 
none of these things are possible. When Jesus went to the cross, he paid the price for our sin. As Peter says, it was with the precious blood of our Lord and Savior. It was that precious blood that had the power to remove our sin. When we observe the Lord's Supper, when we take part in this, it again gives us opportunity to go back and to think back some 2,000 years ago and what it must have been like. Can you imagine? Can you imagine what it must have been like to be in that upper room with Jesus and his disciples? And Jesus saying, this is it. For Jesus to, to look around the room and he says, this is the last time that we will, we will sit together and, and this is the last time that we will be together in, in this setting, in, in this situation. This is the last time. As a matter of fact, of course, Jesus knew, as a matter of fact, that, that, that it wouldn't be just a few hours from the time that this takes place that, that Jesus would be on the cross. Can you imagine what it must have been like to be in that upper room sitting at that table with Jesus on that night, knowing what was about to happen. So we come here today in the Lord's Supper. This, this command is He's given to us. It's been given to us so that we will not forget the sacrifice that He made for us. And let's be honest. It's easy to forget. It's easy to get caught up in life. It's easy to get distracted. It's easy for us to lose our focus. It's easy for us to live for ourselves and not for him. And Jesus says, never forget. As we get ready in just a few moments to take part in this, I do want us to stop for just a moment and have a time of reflection. For ourselves, starting the new year off, the second Sunday in January, second Sunday of 24. I want to share this passage from Corinthians with you. And then we're going to go into a time of invitation. A time where you can do business with God. And then we're going to go into the final part of this service. I want you to pay attention to this passage of Scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 26 through 31. For every time you eat of this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death till he comes again. So anyone who eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord unworthy is guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. That is why you should examine yourself before eating the bread and drinking the cup. For if you eat of the bread or drink the cup without honoring the body of Christ, you are eating and drinking God's judgment upon yourself. That is why many of you are weak and sick, and some have even died. But if we would examine ourselves, we would not be judged by God in this way. This passage is given to us as a warning. And we need to understand that this is a very serious time. For you to participate in this service, you need to know that you know that you're a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I would even go also and say that you need to know that you know that your heart is right with Him. Amen? Amen. With that in mind, I'm going to call for our musicians to come forward and our brother Lauren, music director, to also come forward.
And we're going to go into a time of invitation. Softly and tenderly. This is your time to do business with God so that you will make sure that you're not guilty of the passage that we just read. Softly and tenderly Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. See on the portals, he's waiting and watching, watching for you and for me. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the day. Father, for this time that we're about to enter. May our hearts be clean and pure before you. Lord, as we are about to take place in, in this supper, in this command that you have given to us. As we look back to the cross, as we think back to why you went there, why you shed your blood, why your body was broken. And Father, you did that to take on our sin. And your word says, for everyone who believes will have eternal life. So Father, I pray this morning that each and every one of us come to this time of service in pure heart. In Jesus' name, amen. It is said, for this reason, as we enter in, for every time that you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death till he comes. On the night before he was betrayed, at the conclusion of the Passover, he took the bread, blessed it, broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, this is my body, which is given for you.
John chapter 6 and verse number 58. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers ate manna and are dead. He who eats this bread will live forever. Brother Eustace. There is a clear cellophane seal on the top. Remove that seal, remove the wafer, and eat. Also on that same night, he took the cup, and having blessed it, gave it to his disciples and said, This is my blood, which is shed for you. In Hebrews chapter 9, and verse number 22, the Bible tells us there, and according to the law, almost all things are purified with blood, and without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. Let's pray. Father, again, we thank you for the day and for the hour you've given to us, Lord, as we come to this part of the service remembering why you went to the cross, why you shed your blood, your precious blood. And Father, it is for the remission of our sins. For all who will come to you, believe, and ask for forgiveness, you tell us that you will forgive. Father, thank you for your love. Thank you for your sacrifice. In Jesus' name, amen. If you would, peel back the foil labor, exposing the juice, and drink. After the Lord and his disciples ate the bread and drank the cup, celebrating this first Lord's Supper. It is said that they sang a hymn and went out. Brother Lauren. If you would, let's stand.